Praise the Lord this morning, saints. Hallelujah to the Most High God. He is King forever. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord is so good to continue to instruct His children in all righteousness every day. And we've been given a charge to be a part of that instruction, making ourselves available to the Lord to do what He wants to do through us. And sometimes the road can get trying, you know, hard, uh, because of the flesh man, the old nature man that wants to try to rise up and make an easier way. And the Lord always brings us back to center, hallelujah, to the cross. And I so thank him for that today. We're just so blessed that God is, is able and willing and desirous to keep his people walking in the narrow way. Amen. Yesterday's message about being not ashamed of the gospel being not ashamed of the messengers of the Lord, being not ashamed of the truth, the unadulterated, absolute truth of God, His Word. There's nothing to speculate about it. We must believe the Word. And this is the absolute truth of the Scripture. I mean, God said it. That, that's it. Okay. Now, there's so much revelation in the Word that we continue to grow day by day by day. We continue to grow in grace grow in sanctification hallelujah grow in faith grow in hope grow in love and this is the beauty of the life that we have now in christ we are new creatures we are born anew from heaven and we are seated with christ in heavenly places from that vantage point we walk this walk the walk of victory hallelujah because we are victorious soldiers in the army of the lord and we are fighting a battle. We've been talking about warfare this week. We are fighting a battle that Jesus has won. And he's fighting it out through us as individuals and the corporate body of Christ. Okay? And we need to keep the corporate in focus more than we do. Because we are not alone. We must fight side by side against these principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places, the darkness, okay? And it's something that we're learning to do more and more. In today's message, diversionary tactics. The enemy has tactics of diversion to divert us from walking in peace, from walking in the rest that is Christ. Hallelujah. And we must... Keep our focus upon the Lord. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you will just so anoint this message today to instruct us in all righteousness, O Father, and to keep us walking in the narrow way daily. That we be not turned to the right hand or to the left, Lord, by any diversionary tactics of the enemy, but that we recognize that's the devil, that's the flesh, that's the world, something because the devil uses, Father, he uses the flesh man, he uses the world, all the media, all the wicked thoughts flying around out in the world. And all, of course he uses all of his little imps, his little demons, to try to get us diverted from the narrow way. And so Lord, I pray today you instruct us in understanding these tactics so that we can recognize them and that we don't be diverted any longer. That we recognize right away and we take every thought captive under the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. And cast down all imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Help us, Father, today and crush the devil and put him under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. All praise the Lord. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus is talking to the apostles and He's talked to them. And he's telling them about the teaching of the Pharisees. Verse 10. Neither the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up. How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that you should be ware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them 
not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine, the teaching, okay, the preaching of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. See, there's doctrine out there. There's teaching being propagated by the devil, okay, in the religious system of man, they call Christianity today. And, and it's gotten so bad that they bring in Hinduism thought, Eastern religion thought, Mormonism, uh, Jehovah's Witness, all this stuff. It's all of the devil. It's false teaching. Anything that steers you away from the narrow way of, of the cross, dying daily, taking up our cross and walking with the Lord is the devil's work. It's the devil's work. If you're a believer today and you're hearing this and, and you just want all the time an easy life, let me tell you, we, we enjoy the fact that Father has put us in such a land as America where we have a lot of comforts that many, the vast majority of the people of the world don't have. We're very thankful to God for that. But yet, we still have to walk the way of the cross. How do we do that? Because when we compare our lives, even the poor of us, we compare our lives to how people live in other lands. We're, we're all rich. Really. Really. We have comfortable beds to sleep in. We have heat. We have electricity. We have these computers we can work on. I mean, we have so much to be thankful for. And yet, this whole society is geared toward getting more, getting more, getting more. And that's not the way of the cross. The way of the cross is to deny ourselves. So the enemy is using all these false teachers out there to divert people. He'll use prophecy. The devil will. He'll use prophecy. Getting people just focused on prophecy, on prophecy, on prophecy. And prophecy is not the cross. Although the cross is prophesied in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know that. But if a person is so geared on prophecy, and they're not geared on the cross, they're, they're geared on prophecy. See, the cross is where we die, and it's also from that death we rise to newness of life each day. We walk in the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Victorious soldiers over sin, over death, over hell, over the grave. Hallelujah. <coughs> we are victorious because Jesus Christ has won the battle for us. So it says here in verse 12, Matthew 16. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? The word men there is not male. It's humanity. It's anthropos, okay, in the Greek. And so who, who does humankind say that I, the Son of Man, the Son of humankind, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? This is a very important question for all of us to answer today. But whom say ye that I am? You know, in John chapter 1, they were following Philip and Andrew, they ran after Jesus. John said, Behold the Lamb of God, 
and taketh away the sin of the world. They started following Jesus. Jesus turned around and said, What seek ye? What are you seeking? See? He's asking us the question today. Whom say ye that I am? What are you seeking? What are we seeking? A good life? Huh? Are we seeking money? Fame? Fortune? Are we seeking notoriety? See, these are all diversionary tactics of the devil. Money, notoriety, fame, fortune. That's all a diversion from the cross. All of it. The money that God gives to his people today is to be used for God's glory. That's all it's for. To be used for God's glory. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. When God gives a word to us to bring forth, it's for his glory. And it's for the edification of the body. Or the rebuke. The reproof. With all long suffering and doctrine. Jesus said, Whom say ye that I am? And who do we say Jesus is today? This is something we need to ask in our heart. Answer the question to the Lord today. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Messiah. That's what he told him. You're the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And that's the right answer. Peter saw it. But look, how did Peter see it? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. <coughs> that's how Peter got it. That's how we're going to get it every day, by the Father. He's going to reveal by the Holy Spirit more of Christ to us today. Oh, hallelujah. And as he does that, we're going to see things going on in our life, like I was talking about yesterday. See, being not ashamed of the gospel. But if I grumble, see, the gospel says go the narrow way. So if I'm on the narrow way and it starts getting real hard and I start grumbling, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of the gospel. I'm ashamed of that narrow walk. So I can't grumble. And if I catch myself grumbling, what do I do? I repent. I repent. Say, Lord, forgive me. Help me, God. And the Lord says, take every thought captive, John. Take them captive. Every thought, every thought captive. And, and recognize that thought's coming from the flesh. That thought's because I lack this or that. That thought's because somebody said this to me or that to me. Or that thought's because I saw a news headline. Or that thought's because of this or that. See, we, we know where these thoughts are coming from. Or that thought's from you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So we take every thought captive and we examine it. We say, that's not of God. Throw it out. That's of the flesh. Throw it out. That's of the devil. Throw it out. That's of the world. Throw it out. Because those are diversionary tactics of the enemy to plant thoughts in our mind. Whether they're using Blue Beam Project or whatever they're doing, it doesn't matter. Thoughts are flying around. Thoughts are flying. They're all over the place. Throughout the whole world. And we must keep our focus. If ye be risen with Christ. If ye then be risen with Christ. What? Set your affection. The word there is all your thinking. All your attention. On things above. Where Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. Not on things on the earth. Don't let your affection be on things on the earth. That's what Paul said. Now, Paul was a man that knew what he was talking about because Paul walked the walk. He stayed on the narrow way. There was a time in his life, though, he prayed. 
He prayed for three seasons. By nine months, he's, he's, he's like, Father, please remove this thorn. But the Lord revealed to him, uh-uh, Paul. No, I've given you that thorn to, to keep you abased, okay? To keep you down low. Oh, that's one we need to remember. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. So easy to get lifted up in pride in this wicked world that we live in. And the Lord says, no, guard against that. Hallelujah. So we do. Praise the Lord. We remember his word. Look what it says. If ye then be risen with Christ. <coughs> Colossians 3 verse 1. Seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above. If ye then be risen with Christ. Risen. Are you risen today with Christ? Seek those things which are above. Well, if we're seeking all the things of the world, we're not seeking things that are above. That's what it says. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Oh, there's a lot of things up there. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I remember 1995. Right before we got married, Sharon and I, I was in the back of the shop where I worked, Oklahoma City, and... We were talking and we were just standing outside talking and all of a sudden I saw the Lord just in the spirit. I could just see Jesus stand up, just stand right up. Hallelujah. That was in 95. I mean, Jesus is looking. He's got eyes, a flame of fire and he's looking and he's seeing us. And he has a plan that he's unfolding day by day in our lives. Hallelujah. And he sees when we get out of the plan. And he knows, oh, man, why are they doing that? He's like, he knows why, but he's like, you know, from our way of thinking, we, you know, he's like, man, look at them. What are they doing? And he knows what we're doing. We're trying to make it easier on ourselves. We're listening to the diversionary tactics of the devil. And the Lord says no. So he has to bring in, what does he have to bring in? He has to bring the pressure on. When he does that, Oh, then we realize, oh, Lord, forgive us, forgive us. We stepped out of the path, Lord, forgive us. Or we stopped walking on the way. See, the narrow way is so narrow, there's room for one foot on the narrow way. One foot. If we stop walking on the narrow way, one foot is off the path. And it's usually right there where off the path in the world. So we don't want to do that. We stay on the narrow way. And the Lord picks us up. He shows us. Because when we divert, when we're diverted by the devil or the flesh of the world, what happens? Here's what happens. The principle of reaping and sowing has to come in. And the Lord allows it in order to get us back on the narrow way. Not to condemn us. Not to, to condemn us and judge us to hell. But to convict us. To bring us back into the narrow way. This is what he does. And it's a beautiful thing. So don't fight it. If the Lord's convicting you today of something. You just repent. Just say Lord I repent. Forgive me. Forgive me Lord. I know what you told me. I know Lord. But I was trying to just make it easier on myself. Or I was just trying to avert this conflict. Or that conflict. No Jesus said we will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. <coughs> Look, I'm going to finish reading this. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection, oh hallelujah, on things above. Not on things on the earth. So what do we see? with our eyeballs when we wake up in the morning we open our eyes what do we see we see the ceiling in our bedroom something of the earth okay i'm talking now physical sight we we get up out of bed we see the house where we live the place where we live 
We see all these physical things out in the world. We see the sunrise. We see the, the clouds. We see the snow piled up 20 feet high <laughs> in some cases. We, we see all these things, okay? And these are all things below, aren't they? So the Lord here is speaking in our inner man, in our spirit. Seek those things which are above. Hallelujah. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Hallelujah. For ye are dead. For ye are dead. Do you know that today? That ye are dead? This is something we're learning more about too. And your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. So let's look, I'm going to look that word up and give you the complete definition in verse 2. Okay. Of chapter 3 of Colossians. Because we need to see this. It ties in real well. Okay. Set your affection on. Okay. To exercise the mind. To exercise the mind. Now, some Christians today are exercising their mind. Every Christian is, really. You think about it. Every believer is exercising their mind. Okay, now, when you do exercises, let's say you go to the gym and, and you, you start doing exercises. You do jumping jacks, and push-ups, or whatever. And then you pick the weights up and you do the exercises. You're moving your arms back and forth, doing some curls, okay? Doing some bench press, all right? You're doing some exercises, all right? This is what you do with the body, okay? You're exercising the body, okay? This word is to exercise the mind, okay? So where are you clicking? What are you clicking? What are you doing? What are you doing? Think, 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 think. To exercise the mind, that is, entertain or have a sentiment or opinion by implication to be mentally disposed. Mentally disposed. Oh, boy. More or less earnestly in a certain direction. Intensively to interest oneself in. Oh, oh, what we Christians interest ourselves in, huh? With concern or obedience. Set the affection on, okay? B, be careful. Be like, be of one, be of the same, okay? Let this mind regard, savor, think. Set your affection on. Exercise the mind. Entertain or have sentiments or opinions on things above. Not on things on the earth. It's what it says in the word right there. 3, 2. Colossians 3, 2. So if we're not doing that, then what's going on? We're being, we're being, putting in ourselves, ourselves in a place where we're open game for the enemy. To keep us all bogged down in the slow of despond. Oh, man. We don't need to do that. Praise the Lord. Go back to Matthew 16 here. <coughs> Hallelujah. I got to find my place here. Oh, praise God. Jesus said, Whom do who do men say that I am? Boy, they and Simon Peter answered him. Okay. And Thou art the Christ. You're the Messiah. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto, you, unto thee, that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell, hallelujah, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it oh hallelujah the gates of hell will not prevail against it against the church against the profession of peter the gates of hell will not prevail 
against the church. Hallelujah. And I will give unto thee the keys, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is a mighty power that the Lord has invested in his people. And I want to learn more about this power. And by prayer and seeking the Lord, we can. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Don't tell anybody that I'm the Messiah. From that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how that he must, he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. You see that? He's telling them, this is what I have to do. This is what's going to happen to the Messiah. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. You don't got to go to the cross. And that's what happens today. We have people that we know right now who have listened to the lie of the devil and departed from fellowship with us and I'm not whining about it. Hey, it happens all the time. Because when you preach the cross and you preach the truth of the gospel, you don't divert. You don't divert for anybody. You don't divert for money. You don't divert for notoriety. You don't divert for fame and fortune and anything else this thinking filthy world has to offer. You do not divert. You keep preaching it. And someone comes along who's your... Someone's following this ministry. They're following the teaching. They're listening. They're growing in grace. They're getting victory. They're walking with Jesus. And then someone, one of their friends will come along and say, Oh, those people are not real. Oh, you don't have to go that way. No, there's a better way over here. There's an easier way over here. Oh, no, 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 no. That guy raises his voice. He's angry. Oh, no, you don't. No, he's, he's not telling the truth. And so they plant the seed there. And then they'll keep watering that seed, watering that seed, and then the person just goes away. And they've believed the lie. See? Peter, they believe the lie that Peter spoke to Jesus. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, began to rebuke Jesus, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. No, you don't got to go that way. That's not true. That cross, no, 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 it's not necessary. Oh, I got to look at this word right here, rebuke. To tax upon, censure, admonish, forbid, straightly charge, rebuke. Be it far from thee, Lord. Be it far from thee. Oh, man, I tell you. This shall not be unto thee. But he turned. And this is what we must do. And this is what you must do. If anybody tries to divert you from the narrow way that you're walking. It could be family members, friends, whatever. I don't care who it is. But he turned and said unto Peter. And we must turn sometimes and say unto those people. Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. You're an offense unto me. See? For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Because mankind doesn't desire to die to self. Mankind doesn't want to die to self. Mankind wants to live eternally. They, they, they're trying to make an elixir of life. I saw a story one time. 
seen it years ago and you still see it now and then again and they're trying to find the elixir of life the fountain of youth so that we can live forever on the earth not won't happen but when you die you give the Lord all your reason all your emotions all your will your soul man you die then you get new life resurrection life that can never die hallelujah and that resurrection life in our spirit man the Holy Ghost takes over the soul hallelujah begins to transform it into the image of Christ hallelujah whoo and it's a battle and the devil with all of his methods wiles and tactics tries to divert us see tries to get us in another way oh he'll use a blade of grass yeah he will he'll use anything he can use to get you diverted to get us diverted from the way of the cross and we say get behind us Satan we rebuke you in Jesus name hallelujah and we want to be people who savor the things of God see we savor the things of God oh hallelujah that's the same word hallelujah it's real close to the word I, I read a minute ago to exercise the mind entertain or have a sentiment or opinion savor by implication be mentally disposed more or less earnestly in a certain direction intensively to interest oneself in oh yeah to interest yourself in how many Christians today are interested in the cross? <laughs> Praise God. Oh, they think they know all there is to know about the cross. Jesus hung on the cross. He became a curse for me so that I don't have to hang on the cross. They don't even think about what the scripture says, that you were there with him on the cross. Don't you reckon that to be so? You want some victory today? Make it so in your life. Say, Lord, make that so in my life. That I know I was there with him. And I, I the power of sin and death... No longer has a hold on me. Hallelujah. I don't have to walk by that no more. Praise God. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, trying to divert me from the cross. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any, if any, man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me Luke 9 23 says and he said to them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me daily oh praise God see it's every day we had a guy on Facebook one time, he, he wrote and said, No, you don't have to die daily. This guy was a Calvinist. You don't have to die daily. And I sent him back the scripture, and he didn't even write me back. He wouldn't say nothing. See, this happens all the time. I mean, people who really say, I believe the word of God. I believe it's God's word. And then we can just send them the scripture to show them where they're in error. And they just, they, they stop talking to you. Because they're not really believing the scripture. They believe what makes them feel good. Okay? God says repent. <clears throat> Look at verse 24 again, Matthew 16. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Diversionary tactic of the devil. Save your life. Save your life. Stop preaching so hard. Shave your beard. Do all this stuff. Oh, these are diversionary tactics of the devil that he, 
he says to me quite often. And I know it's a diversionary tactic. And I don't entertain it. Praise God. I just let it God just get out of here, Satan. I rebuke you, lying demons. Hallelujah. What about people that store up guns and ammunition and stuff? We talked to a lady at the Walmart. and She's like, you know, these bullets sell out as soon as they come in. And she pulled up a sign. You only one box per customer, 22 shells. Can't even get 22 shells anymore. But you can get all the other ammo you want. Boy, and they're buying it up hand over fist to try to save their life. It's so sad. I mean, can you imagine a family that has three high-powered hunting rifles and then they have three 12-gauge pump shotguns and some 410s and 20-gauge and a 38 and a 357 Magnum, a 44 Magnum, a 45 caliber automatic, an Uzi, whatever they got, <laughs> nine millimeters. I mean, they probably have... If you took all their guns that some of these people have in their ammo and set it on a scale, it would weigh a thousand pounds or two thousand pounds. And how's that going to save your life? Especially if you're on the run to the mountains, huh? Like Jesus said, when you see the abomination that make it desolate, flee to the mountains. How are you going to flee to the mountains? You have a special 16 foot trailer to bring all your ammo with. Where are you going to put all your tents and all your uh, food and stuff? That's all you need is that ammo, boy. You're going to save your life. Jesus says, no, you're not going to save your life. You're going to lose it. I know that's not a popular message, praise the Lord, but it's the truth. It's the truth. We've seen people that, that come to Arkansas trying to save their life. And they didn't save their life. They died. Spent all their resources to get away from it all, to be safe, and then lost it all. Sharon did a message one time. How much did he leave? How much did he leave? Somebody, a rich person died. How much did he leave? And the preacher said he left it all. He left every penny. See, how many Christians today have of this world's goods coming out the Wazoo, they have more than they could ever think they, they'd ever can spend in their lifetime. And how much are they going to leave when they die? Everything. How much is being used for the Lord today? Not much. This is the truth. And that's a diversionary tactic. People think they're on the narrow way. Are you? Are we on the narrow way, really? Let's get on the narrow way and stay on the narrow way. Walk by the cross daily. Or whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Look at verse 26. See, you lose your life. You deny yourself. And when the devil tempts you to not deny yourself, you rebuke the devil. Get away from me, Satan. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I was rebuking him this morning in prayer. Trying to divert my thoughts. Making me think about earthly things. When I long and desire to think about heavenly things. Stinking demons. Look at Jesus, what he says here. For what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What are you going to give in exchange for your soul, Jesus says. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Oh, praise God. He's going to reward us according to our works. So today he asks us, he says, what are you doing with your mind today? What are you thinking about today? What are you doing with all your resources today, he says. This is the Lord speaking to us. What are you doing with what I've given you? What are you doing with the charge I have committed you to, John, Sharon, Bill, Sue, Sally, whatever your name is? God says, what, have you, what are you doing today?
And then I love this verse, and it goes right into the transfiguration. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And then Peter, James, and John got to go up on the mountain and see Jesus transfigured before them. So beautiful. <coughs> so beautiful. Now I want to read one more little part of scripture here. It's in 1 Samuel 25. This is a story that I've read so many times. And it's the story of David and his men. And David and his men need something to eat. Now, at this time, David's been running from, from Saul for many years. And and the Lord's been preserving David. And at this during his journeys through the wilderness, he's been protecting different people, protecting their sheep, people of Israel, protecting what they have. And Nabal was one of those people. Nabal, the name means fool. So David sent ten of his men to Nabal to get some food. Because, you know, he needed some food. But see, David, he, he felt inclined to do this. And what it was for is to show us a principle that God says, let me be your supply today. Okay? And so that's what I've learned from this story. And me and Sharon have learned together. Let me be your supply I will take care of you. Thank you, Lord. Okay. And so when David sent this messengers, 10 people to go, 10 men to go to Nabal, Nabal said, ah, who is David? Ah, many people escape from their master. I'm not giving you nothing. I'm not going to give you anything. And then here it is. In verse 21. David said, Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him. And he re hath requited me evil for good. So and more also do David unto the enemy, uh, do God unto the enemies of David. If I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. This is David's determination. David, the devil's coming to David right there. The devil, the flesh man's rising up. David says, okay, Nabal, here I am taking care of your house, taking care of your belongings, protecting everything you have, and you don't want to give me a few sheep for my men? I'm going to come in there and kill every one of your men. I'm going to come in there and I'm going to make a slaughter of you, Nabal, and all of your household." And there ain't going to be none left that pisses against the wall. That's what David said. Now, who was David listening to? The devil. The devil. That was a diversionary tactic. God was teaching David something. Look here. God had a special messenger that day for David. And lo and behold, it was a woman, Abigail. Abigail. I know the men don't like that. But God uses women. And if you read about some of the godly women in the Bible, you will see that God used them in mighty ways. Okay. Because they were willing where the men were not. Abigail. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground. She humbled herself before the king and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my lord, look at her intercession here. Upon me, my lord, upon me let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience, and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not, my lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. She said, I didn't see anybody that you sent. She's interceding right now, see, for her household. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming 
to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand. Now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. She loaded up a whole bunch of food to take to David. I pray thee forgive the trespass of thine handmaid. She took the blame herself. This is the cross life right here, I'm telling you. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord. And evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking through Abigail to David. Listen. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee, and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. And the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. Oh, hallelujah. Ooh, that's a good word that gives me courage today and encouragement. God says the souls of our enemies, them shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. Oh, praise God. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee. See, the devil knew if David did this, it would be a grief unto him. See? And God sent Abigail to show David all this, to speak through her. God said, I can use Abigail to speak to David. And he did. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt with dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. And listen to what David said now. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. I got holy bumps. And blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood, and from avenging myself with mine own hand. There is another diversionary tactic right there of taking vengeance ourselves upon our enemies. And God says no to that. No to that. Oh, hallelujah. And in verse 34, David said, For in very deed as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back, from hurting thee, except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me? What if Abigail would have said, Ah, oh, no, I'm not going to go. I'm just going to go run. I'm going to hit to the hills. I know David's coming to kill everybody, so let's hit the road. See, that would have been a diversionary tactic from the devil for her not to be obedient. She knew what she had to do, and she did it. Hallelujah. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which kept me back, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hast hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. So David received of her hand that which she had brought unto him, brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal. And behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Oh, he was feeling good. Wherefore she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. Till the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone, 
And it came to pass about ten days after that the Lord smote Nabal that he died. You see, God can take vengeance on our enemies. We don't have to. So that's another diversionary tactic of the devil is for us to take, to get vengeance. For us to figure some way out to get them back. No, no, no. Jesus said, pray for your enemies. And those who, who leave the fellowship with you, if you're fellowshipping with believers and they leave the fellowship with you, because you're speaking the truth to them, the way of the cross to them, you have to just let them go. This is what we have to do. We have to let them go. We try to get them back, but when they don't respond, when they don't come back, you just have to let them go. And God knows their heart, and God will take care of that. God will take care of that. Could be over just a misunderstanding. We've had that happen recently. Just a misunderstanding. Gone. Lord says, let him go. Have to. Because we got work to do for the Lord. And that's a diversionary tactic, see? And I'm telling you right now, we have been diverted. We have been. But the Lord always brings us back to center. The center of the road. The narrow road. He always does. He's faithful to do that. So we don't be diverted. For very long. And we're recognizing more and more the tactics of the enemy to, so that we can stay on the narrow way. And we want you to know that. You can stay on the narrow way today. Don't be diverted. You got a hard boss today. They're treating you bad at work. You know what? God says, put up with it. Just just put up with it. I'll take care of your boss. Dimitri Dudeman, he had a hard time. Yeah, they were persecuting him and they were electrocuting him in the electric chair of the colonel, slapping him, beating him, all the torture they did to him. And he he was obedient to God. He didn't answer one of their questions. And then one day, that was it. The Holy Spirit said, okay, your time is up, colonel. And they found him dead, laying behind his desk. And what did those guys do after they found that colonel dead, the one who was persecuting Dimitri, the one who was electrocuting him and treating him bad, God's servant? They let him go. They gave him papers to get out. And so he come to America to warn the American church that judgment's coming. And the American church just thumbs their nose. Oh, that's a nice message. Thank you. Let's go to McDonald's. Oh, church service is over. Got to go to Johnny's and get a burger. And then you, you know, you, you have an announcement at church. We're going to meet at the Pizza Hut on 20th Avenue at... 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Boy, the place is packed with church members. And at the Pizza Hut, you say, Now, tomorrow at 2 in the afternoon, we're going to have a prayer meeting at church. And five people show up. And then the pastor gets up on Sunday, and he's, he, doesn't, he doesn't rebuke anybody because he's going to preach a message of just, Okay, well... Maybe we'll have a better turnout next week. The true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ is, is one who denies himself, takes up his cross daily, and walks with the Lord. And if you don't know how to deny yourself, you go tell the Lord that you don't. You tell the Lord, you be honest with him. Tell him, I, I like living like I'm living, Lord. I like living this this full, uh, voluptuous life of everything I want and need and everything, and I just want to load myself up with more. Just tell him. And he'll whisper in your ear, okay, all right, all right, you can have that. But i got to let you know, one day I'm taking it all away. That's what he told me in 1992 when I was in a backslidden state. I was watching the news. And the people in Russia were standing in long lines. You couldn't even see the end of the line. It's kind of like they stand in a line to go get a Led Zeppelin ticket. I remember when I was a kid, they had a Led Zeppelin concert, and all those hippies were showing up a week before the tickets went on sale. There was a long line, boy, to get a ticket to go see the devil. Yeah. Anyway, they were standing there for a loaf of bread. A loaf of bread. Hard loaf of bread. Had to wait in a long line. And then after the news, my brother and I, we went to the grocery store. 
went into that big old Albertson's grocery store. And I was, I was just, I looked at all that and I was walking down the bread aisle and it, there was like a hundred different types of bread. And the Holy Spirit just spoke in my spirit and said, I'm taking it all away so that my people will look to me for what they have need of. Now God spoke that word to me in 1992. And let me tell you something. God does not speak a word to a man or woman of God except he starts doing it in their own life. And we've been in times where all we had was a piece of bread to eat. And he taught us how to be thankful for very little and thankful for very much. God is good to do that. But how many Christians today want to learn that lesson? Because I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a very trying time for the church that's coming as we get closer to the return of Christ. And these diversionary tactics of the devil are going to come into play more and more because people are going to believe the lies of the devil thinking they're going to have a piece of bread, they're going to have a piece of food for their children or something like this from the man, and they're going to fall for the lies of the devil. They're going to be diverted right into hell because of their, their mouth, because of their, their stomach. And God says, don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. God says right now today, trust me, learn from me, walk with me. Let me show you, let me guide you, let me lead you, let me love you like I want to love you. And we say, yes, Lord, love me, love me. He says, I'm going to love you like I love my son. And we say, yes, Lord, love me like you love Jesus. And he says, here's what I gave my son, the cross. And we say, oh. But you did that so I wouldn't have to go. No, no. I did that to show you that you can. To show you that you must. Because that's the way he entered into glory. And that's the way we will enter into the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I thank you for this word today and bless you. And I pray that you would help us, Lord, as you teach us today what you want to teach us. That we be receptive to your word today, Lord. That we don't buck and kick like an old jackass, Lord. But that we be receptive to you. Don't let us be like the mule, Lord. But let us be the clay. And you the potter. You mold us and fashion us, O God. According to your purpose, according to your plan. To form us into the image of your dear Son. And crush every demonic force that would try to hinder it. And give us understanding and let us recognize the diversionary tactics of the devil this day. And don't let us be deceived, Father. Keep us, we need you to keep us in the straight and narrow way. And help us to be cooperating with you, Holy Spirit, and surrender in Jesus' name. And put the devil under our feet. Amen. Glory to the King of kings and Lord of lords. Praise God. The Lord bless you today. Keep you. Make his holy face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his holy countenance on you and grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you. Oh, hallelujah. His name, authority, character be in and upon your lives. In Jesus' name, amen.